Today we are at a place called Living Land. Uh, we gotta learn how to be a rice farmer. So let's learn all about rice farming. We are Christian and Emily, and we are couple nomads. This is our story of how we quit our jobs to travel the world. Today we are in Luang Prabang, a beautiful French colonial town on the north of Laos. Luang Prabang is also a World UNESCO heritage site since 1995 due to well-preserved temples, colonial houses and natural environment. Many things to do here in addition to learning about rice farming. Later in this video we will give you tips on other things to do while you are here such as visiting Quan Si waterfalls, watch a local football game or go bowling because apparently that's a thing here which we didn't know. So uh, stay tuned for that, but first let's show you our day as a rice farmers. Welcome to our series in love with love. It's a beautiful world out there. Just don't pass on the dare. If you have the will and a moment to spare, it's a beautiful world out there. It's a beautiful world out there. Living Land Farm is a working community enterprise that was founded in 2005. In addition to letting tourists play farmers for a day using traditional rice farming techniques, the Living Land holds free English classes for the local um, children and local villages at their farm. They also allow their land to be used for training for students. The project also supports children from low-income families with education and medical needs and they also employ people with disabilities. Okay, time to rice farm. First, we need a hat. Today we are joined by two of our friends, solo travelers Alina and Noah, both from Germany. The first step of rice farming is to select the grain to plant to make sure that we get a good harvest. And then we plant them in mud. And here the seeds will grow for weeks until they're ready to be replanted. This experience is to learn rice farming without machines. So to help plow the field, we have help from Susan, the buffalo. Next, the farmers move the seedlings from the nursery to the plowed field and each seedling must be planted in the mud by hand. This usually takes quite some time so the farmers are singing local songs to each other. Then it's just to make sure that the plants have enough water until it's time to harvest the crop. Cut the stalk near the base and bundle the rice stalks together and place them in the sun to dry out. When the rice is dry, the bundles are thrashed against a wooden board. This gets a lot of rice out of the bundles, but it also sends straw and rice husks everywhere. Since these materials are lighted in rice grains, farmers use a fan to sort the rice from the rest. The rice is then loaded into the baskets to be transported into homes or to storage, 
and these can weigh up to 30 kilos and the farmers have to walk a long way carrying these. The Living Land Farm doesn't use machines. They prefer to honor traditional methods of husking rice. Instead of modern technologies, they stomp the long rice of timber that hammers the rice into a stone bowl. Then women use trays of bamboo to throw the rice into the air and catch it. Back in the day, if you couldn't do this well, you couldn't get married. Well, luckily I'm already married. The rice is then either cooked or made into flour using this machine. Next is just to cook the rice and eat it. This experience took about 4 hours and it cost $30 per person. Definitely worth it, it's, it's a nice experience. You get to know or get to feel how the local people do it. And believe me, it's a very hard job. Very, very hard job. If you're interested in trying this when you are in Luang Prabang, you can book directly with them by texting them on WhatsApp. The number is on their website, which we have added in the link below. Here we are. So we just finished visiting Kwan Sai waterfalls. Uh, we came a bit late, so we didn't have the chance to swim, but we went all the way up to the viewpoint. Yeah, if you want to go to all the way around the waterfall, it would take you about an hour. It's yeah. quite a steep hike, but... Make sure you bring water with you. And mosquito repellent. Yeah, lots of them. <laughs> uh, if if you ask if it's worth it or not to go up there, well, mm -hmm. uh, if you want to do some exercise and some workout and then you can jump in the lagoon, in the waterfall to yeah. swim. It's very sweaty and you can swim in this uh, lagoon, so the waterfall was quite nice. We didn't do that this time, but we wake nice. up late. Yeah. <laughs> if I you mean, want to come alone where there's no people, come early, early yeah. like 8 a.m. when they open. Make sure you take, when you come in, go to the right side and you will see the bears and you will see also a little leopard cat. It's a nice place to come, it's 25,000 kip to get in. Obviously the inflation has brought up the price, but it's like a dollar 25 cents. Yeah. So it's definitely worth it. It's about a, an hour almost drive from the city. From the city, so you can either rent a tuk-tuk or you can take a motorcycle. We pay for the tuk-tuk like 400,000. For the entire day, I will say it was worth it. Yeah. yeah. watching Luan Prabang United against Ezra. I got myself a little goodie. The Luan Prabang United t-shirt. Go on lads. Well, the game just finished, the local team lost 1-0, it was a very tight game, a bit bad quality but it's still good, it's like a Sunday league game, uh, people had fun, so that's pretty good, that's the most important part, and yeah, after the game all the local people just jump inside the stadium and they just have a very good time and fun time, go United, yeah, and uh, Uh, as soon as we arrived in Luang Prabang, the first thing people told us, have you been in the bowling last night? And we were like, what? And then we realized later on that people usually go out at night just to play bowling and get drunk. 
They don't only have bowling, they also have archery and ping pong. But believe me, you don't want to play archery while you're drunk because that can go very wrong. So we went there around 8 p.m. and there was no one there. But around 10 or 11 p.m. people started to come and the place got packed. It's, ro it's a rundown place that doesn't have all the weights and no shoes. But they serve alcohol so that makes things more fun. We pay around 20,000 kip per person for a game and also if you want to do archery it costs 10,000 kip for 5 arrows per person. So that's it from Luang Prabang, we are going to continue north now to a town called Nong Kiao. Our plan is to cross the north border of Vietnam with Laos but we don't know how to do it yet. So we will have to figure it out when we get there. We are very excited to share with you what's coming after here. If you really like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to continue our journey, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We don't need the past in our lives for tomorrow. Never see the end of the night for sorrow. What do we do to love? What do we do to love?